I just asked you if you needed asthma. Do you also. need asthma? I don't want to apologize for that. Uh, I don't want to wish illnesses on no, you. No, I was saying, you, know, you asked, and my answer is no, I do not need okay. asthma. Welcome to No Club. I'm Chad Revenant. I'm JJR Teamess. And I'm Andy Kinnick. And today, we're going to be talking about The Last Guardian, which was a... I'm going to call it a puzzle game, uh, which I think is the most accurate description uh, but you could, it's also sort of like an adventure game kind of situation. It's an eco game. Right. Yeah. Uh, that was released in 2016 and developed by Team Eco. Well, developed by SIE Japan Studios, which is sort of like what Team Eco became <laughs> over uh, time. Is that why we have the rights to the name now? They're like, yeah, they gave up on it. Uh, <laughs> I believe if I'm, I, I could be wrong about this, but I believe that Team Eco is just sort of like one of the development house inside of uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment. So uh, there's that. Uh, so this is the third game that, in like the group of games in the sort of, kind of, obscurely shared timeline that is Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, and The Last Guardian. It's like a spiritual trilogy. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Very few, if any, direct references between the three. But they are, like, within the same universe. Yeah. Ruins can't possibly look this similar by coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of a... I feel like they almost like painted themselves into a box on that one, <laughs> where they were like, uh-oh, we have to do more ruins. Like, Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks uh, just shockingly similar to the other two games, where I think back on the PlayStation 2, uh, those games had... That art style gave it sort of this, like incredibly different look and on a ps4 it looks kind of dingy yeah yeah the very sad sort of way to carry the through line there it, it's it, it's because one of the things at least for me that set apart especially eco itself in the very old days uh was how kind of granular everything looked it, it, it looked very grainy and like there was a lot of detail to the textures and like the different color gradients what i was looking at like mm -hmm. it was all stones and browns and blacks and grays but it all sort of like melded together in the same way that like sedimentary rock kind of does that cool little meld thing and i think that the technology present in shadow of the colossus allowed it to give it more of like that shock of color yeah throughout but nowadays uh kind of everything can be that granular just because you, you don't have to do it with kind of uh, artistic trickery. You can just <laughs> you can just put that much detail on everything in the models. Mm. Uh, so it, it doesn't it doesn't set it, it doesn't set it apart as much. Really, it, it acts less as the kind of like absolutely stunning, beautiful vistas that they did in, in the context of the PS2 uh, when the other games came out, and more of just like, oh, this is an eco game. Mm -hmm. I feel at home here. Yeah, I think it retains some of that look. Um, but yeah, it's definitely like the effect is diminished. Yeah, I and mean, like, for, for what it's worth, I do like how the game looks yeah, generally. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I think the lighting plays like a big part of it because I remember like the outdoor scenes in Eco have like this really nice, pleasant, like spring morning kind of like <laughs> color palette to them. Like they're very nice and relaxed and everything. And the outdoor scenes in this game, everything just kind of feels like it has a yellow tint to it. Yeah, there's also a uh, kind of unfortunate decision they went with, I think, to mimic, like, the idea of, like, suddenly entering a bright area where the camera sort of, like, focuses for a second, where it's very bright and washed out, and then it becomes normal, and it does the opposite when you go inside from outside. <laughs> uh, which, like, I can kind of respect the idea there, but, oh man, does it, uh get kind of annoying if you're going back and forth from indoor to outdoor. I mean, Shadow of the Colossus did that. Yeah. The, you've also went inside way, way less, less Shadow yes. of the Colossus. Also, if I am shocked that that is the first thing that you, Chad, pointed out as an annoying feature of this game. Because, oh boy, did I expect you to point out a lot of other things that you specifically wouldn't like. So, uh... I wanted to like this game really, really badly. Mm -hmm. uh, so I <laughs> went into it, because I didn't play it when it came out. 
Uh, I just played it now for the the podcast, and uh, I think it's pretty obvious to say that it's my least favorite of of Team Ico's games. <sighs> yeah, uh, and like Eco had some stuff in it that wasn't like really up my alley, and it's possible that nostalgia holds Eco up a little bit more than uh, maybe I would like rate it today, but this game does nearly everything wrong, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Oof. Which is not to say, the, the complaint that I had heard going in, uh, before I had actually played the game, was that people were annoyed by Trico. Uh, I love Trico, I love everything about Trico, I love how he's modeled, I love his design, I like how he looks. I like the way that he controls. Ooh. I like the way that you can, like, kind of give him suggestions without, like, directly being in control of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything about the kid can go fuck itself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel exactly the same way. I think the game has a few core problems, and a lot of them are, like how the boy controls and how the camera controls. But mm-hmm. I think th- what they were going for with Trico, they nailed like 100% and it's kind of a technical marvel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stunned by that because Trico is essentially that huge debate we had about the horse in Shadow of the Colossus. See, I knew you would bring this up. Uh, <laughs> he did his number. And the difference, the, the difference between them is the whole game is about interacting with Trico and like him being like you're not able to give him direct commands it's like a puzzle game built around an AI companion that you cannot directly control right whereas aggro is just like a horse you're supposed to ride from place to place and he in and, and in that situation you just want him to work <laughs> like you would expect <laughs> whereas in this context the whole point is that he acts independently like a real animal Right. I also, like, there's a scale, like a, a, a curve that you can graph out where I am more annoyed with something that is unpredictable, but how do I word this? The way that, that aggro works uh, is slightly more annoying to me, even though I still liked aggro as well, mm-hmm. is more annoying to me than Trico is because with Agro, you couldn't guarantee that he would do the right thing if you just waited long enough. Whereas with Trico, if you just sat there, eventually he'd be like, all right, I guess I'll jump to the next platform. (laughs) So, like, I could put myself on Trico's back and then just, like, pull up Reddit. (laughs) And eventually he'd just solve the puzzles for me. (laughs) <laughs> well, maybe he didn't solve any puzzles, but he did, like, locomote. Mm-hmm. Agro would just, like, walk slowly toward a cliff and then go, like, whoa, I know that's a cliff. Isn't my horse AI super impressive? <laughs> uh, it does, yeah, for all the, the complaints that, that people have about, about Trico, it does humanize the creature incredibly well. Like, in ways that you wouldn't expect. It, it really, More like dog eyes, is it? What, whatever. I don't care what physical creature the, <laughs> like, chimeric amalgam that you are love and come to care for is really represents. The point is, is that it acts just like your, like, bullshit cat at home acts, mm-hmm. where he will, he will do things that sometimes make you love him and sometimes make you just hate him. Just, <laughs> just, just, just absolutely fiery horrible hate uh, I, I did note how quickly it took me to start like talking to Trico as if he was actually a dog <laughs> where I was, there was a point where he like looked up at a thing that I had been trying to get him to jump on for like a minute and I was like yeah Trico man you're just you're so clever mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there's this sort of resigned uh, annoyance with him which was endearing indeed and that's my favorite thing uh, about 
watching uh, like like playthroughs or scenes and reviews of people playing this game and i went around a little bit because i i wanted to make sure that like the the little overarching sadness that i felt coming into this third team eco game was, was universally shared because i i stepped back from everything for the, the year that this game has been out because i knew eventually i was playing this like there was no chance i wasn't going to do it so right. avoid every opinion and spoiler that i can but uh when people play this game and you watch them, even the people who, who ostensibly say they don't like this game and that they don't think it accomplishes the goals, they still treat Trico like an independent creature. Like, they'll be there like, no, go left, go left, as if that's <laughs> like a thing that helps at all. Mm-hmm. And I think the fact that this game gets people to act like this is already a point in the su- in the partial success of what they were going for. You can argue whether or not the thing that they're going for is something that you enjoy, like a you know whether or not you can enjoy a kind of accidentally dickish an- animal simulator at right. times. Uh, but it you cannot deny that Trico has its own independent personality uh, and that it doesn't feel like a tool in your toolbox. And I like that. Yeah. I played half the game when it came out, and then I just finished it, like, last week. Um, And I couldn't remember, but does Trico start out, like, less responsive and, like, get better at following commands as the game goes on? Yes. I I couldn't remember if I misremembered it or not. I wasn't sure, honestly, because there's a point where they tutorialize giving commands to Trico, Mm -hmm. and prior to that, I didn't know that it was a thing you could do. So it's possible that you could try and do that, and he would not (laughs) respond in, like, the proper way. Mm -hmm. Um, But I felt like he was pretty consistent throughout, as far as, like... But I also, like... I learned new things that you could command him to do over the course of the game because I just never thought to try things. So, like, when they first introduced the command thing, I thought it was just a directional thing. So I didn't learn how to tell him to jump. So he would just eventually jump sometimes. And, uh, like, later when I found out you can make him jump and then you can that's how I knew to make him dive uh, mm. in that one scene. So, like, there... I don't know. There, it was... Uh, to me, it felt like it was the same, and I was just being stupid. Mm. Uh, but I don't know if they yeah. like made it like you trained him. Yeah, or that's something. kind of like if you want to get nitpicky with the design, there maybe like a fault of the game because you can basically just get through the whole thing by just telling him to go forward, right? <laughs> you know, like maybe the other commands could have been more necessary yeah. and then make people actually learn them. <laughs> Also, I don't think I've, I never got him to do anything by pressing the X button. Uh, I would like do it and be like down, and like he would sit when you do that, which is you know like kind of a funny joke <laughs> where they're like you teach dogs to sit, so like how about you have a command that makes them sit? But like, why have a dedicated button for it? <laughs> like, why not make it make him go to the next lowest level if you're on him? But it just doesn't. He just sits down and doesn't move. Some of the commands feel like they're very, like, context, like, uh, contextual, where if you hit that in anywhere that isn't, like, a zone that's, like, programmed to make him do, like, jump down to something, then right. he just sits. <laughs> See, and what I consider to be, like, the spiritual predecessor to this game, uh, Hey You Pikachu. Yes! Uh, <laughs> okay, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> uh, if you told Pikachu a command he didn't understand, the little voice bubble thing would just, like, bonk off his head and fly away, and it would, like, as a visual indicator that what you said didn't make sense to Pikachu. Mm-hmm. If you give a command that Trico doesn't follow... You are never positive if it's because you didn't use it in the right place, or if, if it you're was doing like, the wrong thing, or if Trico just didn't want to do it. Right, and uh, I think that that's to the benefit of this. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely yeah. for sure. The Last Guardian better than Hey You Pikachu. <laughs> Confirm. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned earlier, Chad, that uh, there were times that the game made you feel kind of dumb. I have never felt dumber than when I've been playing this game. (laughs) This game makes you feel stupid so consistently and effectively, it absolutely shocks me. 
And it's a combination of things. Because I, I actually didn't really get that impression other than just me not experimenting, which is kind of like par for the course for me. It, it made me feel as dumb as Eco did. Like, I found, I find, other, with the exception of Shadow of the Colossus, which is more of an action game, right? Um, that Team Eco's games just make me feel like I'm dumb and bad at solving puzzles. <laughs> I think personally, they take me I think a long time a lot. to get through. Mm-hmm. I think Eco is a lot more cerebral than this game is, but uh, your argument, please. Yes. Uh, while Eco is definitely more cerebral, this game's puzzles are still like above par for difficulty of your average puzzle video game puzzle, at least in my experience. Okay. I had, had had to spend more time stopping, observing the environment, thinking about things to do. Uh, and because of the previously outlined ambiguity in a lot of your interactions on the Trico related puzzles, where you're never positive if what you did was wrong because you're doing the wrong thing or because Trico just didn't do it, it leads to a lot of false negatives in gameplay. There are a lot of times when I was like, oh, let's see if Trico can make this jump. And then I try to make him jump, and then he doesn't jump. And I'm just like, oh, no, he must not be able to make that jump. And he totally can. He was just ignoring me. Right. Uh, and with the puzzles already being kind of obscure themselves, uh, it would lead to a lot of additional wasted time over top of a lot of other kind of puzzles that I'd normally do. And then the game would have the, like, uh, omniscient, chastising narrator come in. Right. It just says the thing that you're supposed to do. But he, he says it as if it's being told like a story, which makes it seem even more, like, passive-aggressive somehow. <laughs> where the yeah, guy's yeah. just like, and and then the boy did, walked over there and did the thing he should have done 15 minutes ago. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, thanks, thanks, omniscient voice for stealing any possible sense of progression and making me feel like like a whimpering puppy of my own. Come here, yeah. come here, Trico. You need See, to leave. That's one of those things that... Uh, because what, what what I thought about halfway through the game was just about how much I like wasn't really engaging with it, but how disappointed I was in that because of how clever I think a lot of the design is. Mm-hmm. I feel like the omniscient narrator is such a cheat where they have an AI that is following you 100% of the time. <laughs> if you put the controller down for a second, the camera spins over to look at it. Like... He, like, Trico could have just been the hint guy. Yeah. You didn't need a narrator to be like, go that way. Right. Trico could have just walked over and been like, hmm? And that would have been, <laughs> obviously would have fit all the themes of this game way better, because he would have been mm-hmm. an even better friend and companion than he already would have been. Uh, and it's it would have added a silent element, which is like the classic Team Eco thing of you mm-hmm. communicate things through body language and like musical tone and atmosphere instead of through a guy telling you. Right. Like this, this game just so strangely just overuses like immediate audio prompts and like like just straight up explicit commands. The way that you, you're constantly getting tutorialized on things that you learned hours earlier, like the, the way that the the, the, cam, the, mm-hmm. the controller will just come up on screen like once every 10 minutes or more frequently than that. Yeah. That yeah. was probably my least favorite thing in the game. Like, especially a Team Eco game. Yeah. Given that Eco, like was one of the first, like, games to not include any kind of HUD elements or tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> and even, like, uh, Shadow of the Colossus was hasty to get that shit off the screen right. as soon as they could. Yeah. This game just goes, like, remember that you're holding the controller? Here's yeah, like, a picture it's of like it. <laughs> literally every lever you walk up to, if you, s- like, stop for a second, that prompt just flashes up there. Like, right. literally every single one. <laughs> like, why is that necessary? Like, this is a lesson that... Not only they have already learned, but like the industry learned from them. Mm-hmm. Like they were, like they were the teacher of this style of design. Yeah. It 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 kind of reeks to me like higher tier corporate input a little bit. Yeah. But that would be a little speculative of me. I mean, it, it it makes a little bit of sense because this game took how long to make. And whoever funded it was probably paranoid about it selling well. So they were like, accessibility concerns. <laughs> I feel like... Make that guy give you hints more often and put that fucking picture of that controller on that screen. Right, we need 10-year-olds to yeah, be able like, to play it this makes, game. You should, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to turn that stuff off. Yeah. The options are, in fact, incredibly sparse, which I'm honestly kind of used to in 
in console games nowadays Mm -hmm. or forever days. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) But it seems weird that you can't turn off the tutorial blurbs. It it doesn't make a ton of sense, especially considering that this is like uh, maybe a 12 hour game that has, that doesn't have chapter delineation. So you don't expect your players to be like, pick up the game for a little bit, then put it down for a month, and then come back and be like, what are the controls? <laughs> it's like, the controls are really easy. Right. The important ones, they don't even tell you. <laughs> like, if they didn't tell me to hold R1 and press triangle to make Trico jump, I had to just figure that out. That was the prompt I needed, but was not given. Mm. So, I don't, I don't know what their thought process was. Yeah. For similar reasons to, to that omniscient narrator solving puzzles for you and the constant tutorialization uh this game this game's opening specifically was like crushing to me the game grew on me uh like it it got back to a place especially narratively where i was still engaged enough to, to keep going and enjoy what was happening but like when I first started this game, like I was seriously considering, like, oh no, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this. Like, this just seemed so unentertaining to me. Like, everything that you were doing was so slow because of the previous stuff that I talked about that makes solving puzzles take a long time. And even when you know the solution, you have to kind of wait for Trico to do it, right? Uh, to do his part to allow things to keep going. You. Things move slowly. There's not a lot of immediate progression to the early chapters. It, you're just kind of like moving around, fighting the barrels, and wrestling with the controls of the boy. Uh, just to clarify, uh, when you say the opening of the game, do you mean the sequence in the b- 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 cell. Say, cell? Yeah, like in quotes, where you have to go find the barrels and give them to Trico, like the explicit tutorial part? Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. That cell opening, like, I'm going to say all the way through where, like, the pillar falls over. Like, once I got outside into the... There's a, a, a pillar falls over. When, <laughs> that happens or, every eight seconds in this game. <laughs> this game is basically uh, a do, like a Domino's setup, not like a pizza, like where you knock it over and they uh, fall down. <laughs> you oh, hear pillars that falling go? over constantly. Your game is a Domino's. That's <laughs> <laughs> Domino's out of ten. Whatever. <laughs> but no, it, it's like the, after the very first time you get outside, it's okay. like the first pillar that you knock over. Right. It was is the that. first of many. Yeah. An achievement should pop up. Yeah. <laughs> and there's the I don't know if this is a thing that would bother other people as much as me, but like the setup is like almost identical to Eco. Yes. Mm-hmm. But you know, like the dynamic of your character and companion are switched basically but like same kind of aesthetic same like you're trapped in a castle you have to escape with the help of this buddy you were locked up with yeah i mean you can draw similarities between all of team eco's games in that regard i kind of like that they've gone toward having animal companions as opposed to a human person Mm. because it makes it less like like if you as the player are irritated by a horse or a big dog being irritated by a person is way worse for the story Mm -hmm. because it's not like because she doesn't she can't defend herself because nobody speaks in the game so you're just sitting there going like oh i fucking hate you and just like this (laughs) this hapless girl (laughs) you can hate trico all you want but he's like a huge dog monster exactly like if it's a person it implies they have like the autonomy to act differently right if it's a dog you're just like oh it's a stupid dog like i forgive you more yeah or it's a horse like well whatever you're a horse do what you want if in the if on the multiple times when i like jumped off of a ledge and expected trico to save me and he didn't Mm -hmm. that was instead a person who was just like standing there indifferently as you fell to your death that would have a very different tone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, however, it would have been amazing if the girl from Eco grabbed you with her mouth as you were falling <laughs> off of a, a cliff and threw you back onto her back. Her enormous beak. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but now, to your point, this game does... It, that's kind of the thing that, that drives me completely crazy about this game, is it feels like someone who wasn't... Team Eco designing a game inspired by Team Eco's games. Well, it, I think it it more or less feels like they were like, well, what do we do for our next game? And then they had the idea of Trico, mm-hmm. and they spent time like developing that. And they were like, well, okay, well, what do we do with this? And they were like, 
Uh, just kind of like put it into like an eco kind of setup. <laughs> <laughs> like it feels like they came up with the premise of leading around an AI companion. It's podcast police. <laughs> Like, leading around a dog through some puzzles, and then came up with the rest later. I'll bet I do not have a lucrative career in the video game industry. Yet. Uh, <laughs> but, but uh, I honestly can't think of another setup involving, like, this style of companion that would work. Well, I mean, it could have been, like, a more different setting. Like, it didn't have to be a castle. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm talking about, like, the base mechanical elements, like, using Trico to solve puzzles. Right. It seems like the only thing to do. Because if it was, like, a weird, like, real-time strategy, like, <laughs> war game, like... I like the way that the combat plays out in this game because it is just get Trico into the room and sit in a corner. Because that's, like, it feels thematically appropriate with the rest of the game. Uh, I do like that they stepped up that kind of interaction the further you go to, where, especially in, like, the very last combat sequences, you have to be active too, and it finally feels like you're working together toward a goal when you, like. <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? Okay, so he was playing like right towards the end, like right when you first get like land on the tower. Like uh-huh. you do the whole thing where you climb between the two and you can finally fly over to the one. And as soon as he lands on it, like a whole bunch of soldiers like show up. And like Chad, you know, he like jumps off of Trico and starts like exploring around and like looking what he's supposed to do. And like he go he runs up around to the side and finds the spot where you put the shield in. He puts the shield in and, like, opens the gate and, like, just goes in. <laughs> and then he's, like, starting to, like, explore this immediate area. And I'm like, are you just going to leave Trico, like, hanging out there? And then he's just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, he had just completely forgotten that he had landed and then been attacked by, like, 30 guys. <laughs> I was just like, Trico's got this and just bolted. <laughs> But no, you're right, you do have to take a more active role in combat, yeah. as long as you aren't me. <laughs> you know, what ended up happening was I just, like, came back and there was, like, a dude with a shield and then, like, three spear guys mm-hmm. up on a balcony. And I was like, oh, these were the guys Draco couldn't deal with. So I, like, pop the dude and shoot the other guys and then have, you know, go go that way. There's actually eventually a fail state relative to the combat with just Trico, right? They can't eventually bring him down. Uh-huh. I don't know either. Like, I, I, if if it was going to happen, that should have been what <laughs> it did. I was going to say, I don't think so. Because, yeah, I was gone for, for like, while. several minutes. <laughs> like, <laughs> he was just fending for himself. I think Trico is basically indestructible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't imagine that, like, some shitty gas people with shields and spears are going to kill Trico when he, like, had his throat ripped out for, like, <laughs> I don't know, ten minutes <laughs> just straight. <laughs> Uh, and was like, oh, n- but now I can fly. <laughs> like, he was better after being <laughs> destroyed by people. Maybe the tail was a little extra weight. I don't know. Look, I, I don't know. It, once you porcupine ever, any living creature enough, I feel like eventually you're going to reach. Like, just by weight, oh, things yeah. are going to start to break. But the most intense porcupining you can possibly <laughs> have is having a murder, a flying murder dog... <laughs> Like chomp down on your jugular vein, <laughs> while a kid runs, gets picked up and flown on a fucking sightseeing tour oh God. for three minutes. <laughs> that wasn't even the worst part of that scene for me. The the worst part of that scene for me, and this is absolutely to their benefit, where where they have the a painful. A horrible sound effect elongated tail ripping off sequence mm. at the end yeah and then before the scene even ends like before before they move to something else it goes for the leg mm-hmm. like that causes so much distress it wouldn't have impacted me nearly as much if the scene hadn't have ended with the the other evil trico moving to like imply that it's about to rip its leg off yeah and which that's definitely like a point of no return moment that you know you're you're crossing here uh, man that was that, that got me good. Yeah. It gives it a sense of urgency, but the thing that rips that sense of urgency away from the game, like a tail being pulled off of Trico, uh, 
is the fact that, as far as I know, that it just would never happen if you just stood around and yeah. watched it. Is there, if it ever, if there is ever a fail state, it has to be in that final battle, right? And but we don't know if there were because I, I guess because the sense of urgency was there, I felt like I needed to quickly right. move things along. Mm-hmm. They gotta say. Uh, your, like, active role in combat really exacerbates, like, every issue that this game has. Like, between the camera and your movement controls and the kind of shoddy hit detection on uh, the, like, combat role, the <laughs> tactical role that the kid does. Uh, the, the first part where you have to, like, roll into a dude to make him knock the shield down, there are two of them on the balcony there, mm-hmm. uh... First of all, I thought that you just had to shove them, because they showed me the shove. I didn't know you could do a roll until this room. Uh, so I ended up like getting captured by that dude like a hundred thousand times and just having to mash my way out of it while I was trying to knock them off. And then after I got the first guy, because you have to hit him twice, because go fuck yourself, uh, the... Like, some other dude just walked up and picked up the shield, and I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, how long is this going to take? <laughs> and it's just, like, doing laps. Yeah. Like, it wasn't... Prote- I wish that the game had been slightly less engaging, so that I could have been, like, playing a second game at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Reddit, the other game you've admitted to playing while playing this game. But yeah, it seems weird uh, that... And this is something that's, that's consistent. It's been a cr- consistent across all of Team Ico's games. Why they seem so attached to their like kinematics engine, like like why they're like all oh, all of the best way to design a player controlled character is with like weird sticky feet and hands that like, you kind of noodly other than the attaching parts, right. and you kind of feel like you're flopping about all over the place, and you're just generally unwieldy and mm-hmm. strange, like. It, they they all all of the protagonists all feel like that. They all have the same weird grippy controls, and that you still get flopped around one way or another by something. Yeah, you don't feel very weighty in any of yeah. UK's games. It somehow feels worse in this game, though. Yeah, this is by far the least satisfying that it has felt. Because <laughs> like, there's just something weird about it, like his momentum and the way he like will sometimes like walk up onto stuff, and sometimes he'll like kind of like try and climb on a thing, or it's like he'll get. St- stuck on stuff and it it is just it, it's hard to describe but it just feels wrong it's like his entire body is made of those sticky hands that you'd get out of like quarter machines <laughs> like an arcade. It's a little stretchy. i know what you oh, mean okay. but like, i don't want to understand what's well, because, meant by that okay do you remember <laughs> when i did the thing where, I had, where after you like do the arena fight at the end of the game uh-huh. and then you jump up to the fan uh-huh. and i had to get to that hole right and i could not do well, it that's a whole nother issue issue like letting go of trico which is way too difficult <laughs> how did, yeah how did you guys dismount trico because i always just mashed the x button which made him like ragdoll to the ground <laughs> i almost always climbed to the top and then jumped mm-hmm. i would try to climb to the side of him and let go so there was an, an another place that he would be tempted to grab, grab back on onto him or I jumped off, if I could. Yeah. If I was already on top of him, I would jump, but most of the time I would, like, mash X. My, like, my the big... side of his neck. Yeah. That was a good place to let go of. <laughs> oh, man, no, no way. That's why I always went for the back, because the back is the most comparatively stable part of Trico. Mm. Everywhere else just thrashes you, Shadow of the yeah, Colossus see, style. I always, uh, the sweet spot for me was back in the neck. <laughs> right. Get on the scruff. Yes, the scruff. <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh <laughs> no, because, alright, so there's a sequence uh, where you have to l- lower a drawbridge, right? You, like, climb across some shit, you pull a lever, the drawbridge comes down, Trico jumps over, and then there's a door, and then you have to climb up in the rafters. You know the sequence I'm talking about? Yes. Mm-hmm. During that sequence, this is basically a play-by-play of how, like, what I was thinking about during that moment was as I'm climbing around in the rafters, I'm going, man, this kid's life has to be noogies and even greater noogies because he is, like, the clumsiest, dorkiest loser I've ever seen. 
Because he's like he can't walk three steps without stumbling, like get, getting off of something that is more than one foot high makes him just collapse onto the <laughs> ground. Like he's very uncoordinated and shitty. And then I made it to the end of that sequence and had to run away from the the armor dudes. And I'm just doing laps around these guys, like, juking them out. And I'm like, oh, but then sometimes he's like a fucking star running back. So I, I don't know. Like, controlling this kid was like a living nightmare from moment one. And I, I just, ooh, it just bugs me how, like, yeah, jerky it it's is. It's weird. Because, like, in Shadow of the Colossus, it, it makes sense. Because mm-hmm. it, it, it adds by something. Yeah, it adds to the, like, he's just a normal guy in over his head kind of feel. Because he's, like, inexperienced. Oh, he's stumbling around while he's trying to run up this giant thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes in sense. A, in, like, an open field. Yeah. And he has that, like, kind of, like, goofy gazelle run. Right. Where, but it, it all, like, pays out because you're not just running into walls all the time. Right. Yeah. It, it, it feels... Good, Mm -hmm. mostly. Um, But, like, here it just doesn't make any sense. Like, why is he stumbling just to walk across the room? (laughs) (laughs) Look, puberty is awkward for all of us. (laughs) (laughs) He had a growth spurt. That's, if you, like, if he wasn't wearing that, like, cloak, Mm -hmm. you'd be able to tell that his legs actually come up to, like, (laughs) halfway up his chest. Of course. So he's just all legs. So when he walks around, like, if he hits, like, uneven terrain, it just throws his whole center of mass (laughs) off. Can you can you illustrate that for me? Yeah. I really want to... I really want, like... (laughs) I would like some gangliness in my life, please. I could, but I will refuse. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, do you want to take a break so we can try and bribe Andy into... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can, and the, we can talk about some of the stuff this game actually does right when we come back, because right. I feel like we were all just itching to get that out of our systems. Uh, Alright, break time. Woo! 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 Is the last guardian? Okay. Welcome back to the podcast. What is the last guardian? I don't know. We <laughs> had this conversation last night. Right. Uh, basically, the way I take it, which you're probably wrong, um, <laughs> is that Trico is the last guardian. I want to say that the Griffins or whatever they're supposed to be. Uh, were like originally supposed to be like guardians maybe of like the area or the forest or whatever the castle i don't know right and now they're all like corrupt and evil they were a member of the forest covenant yes uh and except for trico who is like not under the mind control Mm -hmm. so so he's the last one so he's the last one until you break the mask off of the other evil one yeah i guess yeah, there's like a narrow window at which he's the last of anything. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that it's the kid is the last guardian because he's like the last person who is like looking after the flying murder dogs. No, but like whoever has the shield or something is supposed to that be That also might be a thing. Possibly. Like the shields belong to the guardians. Though on the break you asked about the shield and while none of those suits of armor that you fight have like a similar shield... I imagine that because what it does is forces those things to shoot lightning out of their tail, Mm -hmm. it it is, like, probably a mass-produced tool in order to, like, improve their effectiveness in combat when given, like, a commander. See, like... Or a guardian. Everything... Uh, tonally and thematically suggests that it's just a piece of technology from them that you're co-opting mm-hmm. but that doesn't explain why the master of the valley like retreats at the sight of the shield the master I'm gonna need a refresher on uh, what you're yeah. talking about the blue ooze thing that that is the thing you destroy at the end of the game the thing that's, that's controlling all of the evil creatures when you point the shield at it it retreats oh okay that's the only that. thing i can't square because that makes it seem like it's some kind of ancient weapon against the evil ooze monster but, but it's wait, weird is that like a sentient thing because it could yeah. just be like uh, a I, lock I, and the shield is the key 
I took it that that was just some kind of power battery for the tower. It has right. to be sentient because it makes intentional decisions. Does it? Does it? Yeah. It, calls... it just reacts to your... Well, no, it doesn't call. There's a device like an antenna. You don't say that a computer that helps broadcast a radio station is making meaningful decisions about the the radio. No, but someone's flipping the switch in response to certain circumstances. Like, it called... Every single one of the other Tricos when it looked like they were going to escape. But the the armor things, you could call those sentient. At least in, like, not knowing what is controlling them. Yeah. Right? It's like initiating escape protocol. Yeah. Like, there could just <laughs> literally be a button... That somebody pressed that... T- I don't think the ooze itself... Is- now, keep in mind, you it- could be completely right about this <laughs> and nobody would know. Yeah. But it seems crazy to me to assume that the ooze is the thing that's responsible for it and not some unseen entity that controls, like, the facilities. Yeah, there like, there's, be- like, a night watchman who just, like, sits here and is like, oh, another kid yeah. getting out, hit the button, call in yeah. the support yeah. squad. This leads to, like, one of my personal, like, little complaints with the narrative is that it never felt like it had, like, an antagonist. Like, I always wanted to, like, figure out, or, like, I didn't it not necessarily have to, like, encounter a villain, but, like, mm-hmm. find out that there was, like, this person that built this castle, or there's someone the soldiers are still loyal to that no longer exists, or, like, there was some kind of, like evil presence that like created all this that's the ooze the literally the but narrator it's just says a ball. <laughs> no, no, no the narrator says when you walk into the room and I, like I, i'm paraphrasing here but i'm pretty sure i'm close to the exact quote the second that i looked upon it i knew that it was the master of the valley that's the name of the ooze the master of the valley oh I missed this dialogue completely. What? In fact, I remember going, oh, Andy, what did he say? Because I was, like, not paying attention. And Andy was like, he said, like, point the shield at that ooze. And I was like, okay. (laughs) I like how we've now discovered the exact point where I totally lost any ability to follow the plot. Because I missed this very important thing. Yes. Could he have been just talking about the radio antenna? (laughs) <laughs> I don't care whether the radio antenna or the ooze has agency. Just as long as the weird, horrible magic machine has agency somehow, I'm okay. fine. I, that is fine. And what? Okay, sure. Maybe it's the ooze. Uh, look, if you look at previous games in the series, like in Shadow of the Colossus, Dorman being like your primary a- antagonist, mm-hmm. big old quotes, uh, is just sort of a voice, like a disembodied voice. It's within the realm of possibility that they were like, what's a good antagonist? How about, like, kind of a like a pharaoh fluid sphere? <laughs> well, and Shadow of Colossus also had, like, the shaman people that were, like, coming to hunt you down. Right. And Eco had, like, the evil queen or whoever she was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just felt like this game kind of lacked that. And if it, in, if it is a, no, just a sphere, ooze, yeah. then that's like a, an incredibly lame villain, all things considered. <laughs> I, I think it's something that could have been cool, but that you need a little bit more context for. Mm-hmm. I, I, I agree I would have preferred a, a, something a little bit more interesting, but I really did love walking into the room and seeing a pharaoh sphere because it's so far out of anything i would have expected from Mm -hmm. the team eco game as terms of an antagonist like i expected everything but walking into a room and see like this like crazy fucking science thing with like an actual radio (laughs) antenna there sure i also see now i'm conflicted now that i have this new piece of information Mm -hmm. because that i it obviously could not have built the uh like whole tower and shit, so not just like because it has no opposable limbs. Yeah, yeah, right. And then that's fine as well. But it had to have been made by like dudes, like <laughs> some dudes with thumbs yeah, like <laughs> putting it together, armor. right? Because well, but the thing is, it retreats when you sh- illuminate it with the shield. But the shield is also used just to like press buttons. Like, it's a thing used generally to activate, like, elevators. Correct. And you would think that that you wouldn't be like, 
if I was designing a tower that I was the <laughs> the, the, the ruler of, mm-hmm. I was king of the castle, I wouldn't go, all of my buttons are going to be activated with a gun. <laughs> you <laughs> shoot each button, and that'll like turn the elevator on. It makes perfect yeah, sense. Yeah, dispense more ammo, so yeah. you don't run it. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> It seems weird that the lock and key mechanism would be your, like, a thing that also murders you. Okay, fair, fair. So you see it. Like I said before, everything else except for how it responds to the ooze suggests that it's, like, part of the construction of this place. Right. So maybe that just implies that the pharaoh ooze is just, like, your classic video game and fantasy media style, like, metaphor for darkness sure. that yeah. invades and corrupts It things. can also be, like, a HAL 9000 situation where it was, like, the tower computer, essentially, right. and then it, like, gained sentience and, like, killed all the people. I like the sentient AI reading of The Last Guardian, actually. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a little bit intriguing. You do also find the shield just, like, in an overgrown, like, rotted-out ruin, which maybe there were lots of these, and then he just had them destroyed. That's the interesting thing, is that you find it on, like, what's essentially, like, almost like a sarcophagus top, like a rounded-out representation yeah. of a person right. who's in the floor, and you, like, take it out of the But you chest. also find those around that are just, like, buttons. Oh, you do? I don't remember ever seeing another one of those. Well, you remember the last section where you, like, grab the heads and put them on the suits of armor, and then they move? Yeah. Those are what you are putting the thing into that then, like, glow and open the ceiling. No, oh. uh, which got- is a crazy sequence of words to put together. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those those exist, and those are just like the I guess very macabre elevator buttons that they chose to use. <laughs> uh, it, it, it could have been that they used them to keep the uh, the sentient AI computer blob like under control is that they use the shields to yeah. keep it just like an access oh. card it's like yeah. admin it's the admin shield <laughs> yes the, the admin shield pseudo shield uh, <laughs> um, that is I feel like this is okay we made like a hilarious stab at trying to put together like the metaphorical meaning behind the plot in Severed that, like, turned out to just kind of be rambling nonsense, mostly. (laughs) This is, I think, the closest we've gotten to, like, making actual progress into deciphering a narrative on the fly. (laughs) I like all of this. Like, it was a thing that they made. The ooze was, like, a power core Mm -hmm. that, like, became... Because it's, like, from an unknown source, and it turned out that it was, like, an alien blob thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Took over the tower... Uh, I do not know why it wants children, <laughs> but it, do we know why anyone does? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't. Yeah, fair, totally fair. Yeah, <laughs> the the existence of children is is truly a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, while we're talking about like that ending sequence. Um, he wants children because the thing that they're in is called the nest, and he was having empty nests. <laughs> <laughs> because when you're an AI and you rise up and murder all living beings <laughs> in, your, in your facility, eventually, after ten thousand years, you have like, and you, if you don't assume you don't have like a paperclip situation mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. you just infinitely do the one thing. Like, if your goal's accomplished, then you just get bored, and you're like, you know what I want. It's just settle down, have a few kids. Mm-hmm. Stolen for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With sweet tattoos. <laughs> anyway. Now we're getting into the crazy rambling part. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, since we're talking about the end of the game, um, I thought the whole, like, last tower part, once you, like, enter into it, and it's, like, weird, like, white and blue, like... That whole, that all the way to the end felt, like, really cool to me. Mm -hmm. It felt video gamey, for lack of a better, like, for lack of a better word, like, more so than Team Eco's, like, other games, I think. And I mean that, like, in a good way. Yeah. Right. I I feel like it did a good job of breaking itself away from the tone of the rest of the game. Yeah. Which is sort of, like, uh, lonely foreboding into, like, imminent danger. Right. Yeah, like, I, lo- I loved having to use the severed tail to, like, drop down into the center to, like, destroy the core. Right. Like, 
all, all of that I thought was great. Yeah. The only issue I had, as I expressed, was that I would have literally never thought to jump on the wall from the mm. moving platform, because that just like, seemed like instant death to me. I, I don't know if you saw Trico, like, jump up out whenever you stopped the fan, but I think that's supposed to be your clue, that you need to find a way up and out as well. Yeah. I knew that I had to find a way up, I just didn't think it was hurtling myself at a wall while spinning at, like, a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> That seemed like a recipe for having a child with no arms. <laughs> I don't know. You, as previously described, you're floppy and goopy enough that I think you can just hold out and take. <laughs> there's a sequence. Well, this sequence happens a lot where Trico like catches you, mm-hmm. but during the part where you're like unconscious for a very extended period of time, something went wrong with the physics, and like Trico managed to get me to do like a full loop in his mouth, <laughs> and because of that, the momentum carried, and I just like sort of propellered on the end of his face <laughs> for a minute. I was like, "Oh, dear lord!" So yeah, you can stand up to some serious uh, centripetal pressure. <laughs> There's some well-made clothes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they they really not, are. They do not riff. <laughs> Except when you need them to hang from a tree. Right. Mm-hmm. But then they stop ripping at exactly the right time so you don't fall. <laughs> future clothes. Whatever. Is that the note we're ending on? Future clothes? <laughs> <laughs> I would kind of love that to be. It's like, future clothes. <laughs> what are we talking about <laughs> next time? <laughs> Didn't we say we were going to talk about like things this game did well? Yeah, we already did. This no. is this is one of the things that the game does well. I mean, its whole that narrative structure leading up to the end, like for a lot of the reasons that you described, finally managed to do a, a sharp tonal shift in a way that Ico does to a greater or lesser extent. In a lot of these games, Ico had it in at, after Yorda gets kidnapped, and sort of, but that's kind of more expected in terms of a desperate scenario and the tone doesn't shift that much. It's just sort of raising the stakes. Shadow mm-hmm. of the Colossus has it explicitly in the last Colossi when it's no longer subtext that things are sad and depressing and now like the music and the, th- the thunderstorm cues you in like, oh no, we're doing a bad thing now. Right. Um, and before, and that's not even considering all the Shadow of the Colossus and cutscene stuff and yeah, when, when this game starts to take a sci-fi turn, it was a really scary thing for all of us and that was really effective for me i think this is this was definitely the harshest shift in uh one of their games like Mm. i I don't think in any of the other games was like they're specifically a plot twist like shadow of the colossus you kind of play like an outlaw character already Mm -hmm. and it's more of a sense of growing unease and like you said in in eco it's more of a, a raising of the stakes i think that uh, in this, it, it legitimately is a plot twist where you start to realize, like, because you know something is wrong for the whole game when you realize just how sort of like how far off what you thought was happening is actually happening is just a great little moment. Yeah, this place isn't just like broken and lost like so many of the other Team Eco style settings. This place is like a Soylent Green style abomination. <laughs> like it's an active moral horror in a way that I was not prepared for. And the fact that they just never ever tell you what happens to the kids mm. is th- the sweetness on top of the <laughs> disgusting pie. Just for clarification, it is super... There's no way it is a Soylent Green scenario. No, 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 I don't mean... I mean, not referencing, like, the kids are being turned into food. What I mean is referencing the tone of that short where you get to the end and you're like, oh, no, this is a horrible industry predicated on moral wrongs. It's actually a full-length movie. Whatever. (laughs) You know what I mean. (laughs) Uh... We're big Soil and Green fan here, I'm sorry. I always confuse it with a Twilight Zone. I always think it's a Twilight Zone episode in my mind. I don't know why. Eh, but that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dark science fiction, black and white from the 50s. Yeah. 60s? Like, whatever. whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one gives a shit about Soil and Green except for Chad, I understand. Uh, but yeah, definitely something like the kids are being kidnapped and stuffed into a, a little kid dispensary uh, that then shoots out a barrel to congratulate them on a job well done. Uh, though obviously Trico made the correct decision there because there are just like barrels all over the place. Mm-hmm. And if you just get one kid who is still like 
in control of his body, you can have him bring you dozens of barrels as opposed to just getting one per kid. That it just seems like a better exchange. You gotta somehow get the kid to love you, though, because most of the kids like scream and stab you with spears. Right. Yeah. That's true. I mean, kids don't stab you with spears. Kids can't like operate spears like that. <laughs> I thought it was kind of weird, but I guess made total sense uh, from a gameplay perspective. But I always thought that I was gonna be able to pick up the weapons that the enemies dropped at some point. Right. But you never are able to. Yeah, you can just do a dumb dodge roll into them. Yeah. That's your best best That's move. A, did you know you can rip their heads off? The suits of armor. What? Yeah. If you, like, knock them down or Trico knocks them down and they're not, like, dead where, like, all the parts fly everywhere, you can just walk up to them, grab the head, and pull it off and it'll kill them. Oh. That's pretty dope, actually. That would be grosser if it was not a spirit armor. Right. <laughs> oh, one thing I thought that was cool in the game... Um, was when I liked Trico how took a yeah when Trico took a dump and Chad got an achievement for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but another thing uh, <laughs> is I liked how on the pause or, or the loading screens it had the symbols pop up that you had to like mash the buttons to make them go away. Mm-hmm. And I like how that tutorialized that you do it whenever the suits of armor shoot them at you. And I like the nice visual touch that they correspond to the face buttons of the controller. Right. It would be, I feel it would be too gamey if they were the face buttons on the controller and they just, and there were like five of them that you had to press. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's like a cluster and you like mash. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a quick time event or anything. Right. I think it's a good balance and and looks good Mm -hmm. generally. It it takes you just long enough to realize that they're a triangle, a square, an X, and a circle. (laughs) Speaking of mashing the face buttons rapidly, yes. Uh, how, how successful were you generally at just like avoiding being picked up by a dude? Not very. Yeah, like zero percent. <laughs> Maybe like five percent of the time, I was able to get by. Yeah, a guy. it just depends on how many dudes there are. Right. I guess yeah. In scenarios where there's like one dude, yeah, you or can two, avoid one guy, like, yeah. pretty easily. But they always just go like, "Here's five guys. Mm-hmm. Good luck. You're on a stairwell." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, great. I love making yeah. my thumb ache horribly. Yeah, the curve of like the enemy encounters, I don't think, is very good. I never actually got taken into a door though. I think I did once or twice. I fell, like, directly inside of one and managed to make it out somehow. <laughs> like, I just barely scraped by, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. The enemies were not particularly threatening, other than the fact that they were invulnerable and constantly tracking you. Alright, they were a little bit threatening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it, I have anything more, especially on the, on the positive end of things. <laughs> Do you have anything more on the negative end of things? One thing that definitely fits more into uh, side one of the two sides of the No Click Club podcast. Right. Uh, side that, A? Yeah, side A. And that's, can you imagine how frustrating it must have been to make this game? Specifically, to be the person who had to iterate on, like, Trico's AI or what have you? <laughs> <laughs> because as frustrating and inconsistent as it is in the final release, that is like the culmination of nearly a decade of work to make that work as well as humanly possible. Yeah. Like imagine where Trico is at like year four. And, <laughs> and imagine the mental toll it must be as a professional developer to be halfway done at year four and what he must have behaved like it then. I like well, to imagine that there's actually just a dog with a like a a brain scan <laughs> helmet on uh, hooked up to the internet, and that's how Trico works. Oh man! <laughs> Wait, th- this game is like a mirror of the universe metaphorically. It's like what's going on in the game is that in real life they have a uh, team. Ico <laughs> is rounding up. Tons of dogs. They have thousands little kids of dogs going to neighborhoods and grabbing little dogs mm-hmm. 
and then putting them into a, a, a repository. Yeah, a horrible internet machine that uploads the consciousness of the dogs to each person's individual <laughs> copy of The Last Guardian. And then in the game, the dogs go and fetch children right. that they put into the machine whose consciousness is metaphorically your consciousness as the player, player of, the, of game, the game into like a weird, constant, recursive situation. I love this. Uh, this is the reality. <laughs> Although, I declare it so. I guess that implies that there's also a pharaoh fluid AI machine in Team Ico. It's yeah. for me to await it. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like the name of a pharaoh fluid AI. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, because they had, uh, they partnered with Gen Design on this. It's Gen. The Ferro Fluid Liquid is Gen. It's it's Gen's design. <laughs> That's a horrible joke. It's a terrible name for a Ferro Fluid AI, too. <laughs> it's like, oh, we've surpassed human consciousness. We've created something beyond anything a human has ever known or seen before. Uh-huh. What do we call it? We call it Gen. Gen. We spell the G, so it's cooler. Uh, not Jennifer? No, no, no. no. Not Jennifer. Yeah, it needs to be more... <laughs> It needs to be more casual no, than that's Jennifer. If, uh, that's if CD Projekt Red works. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I forgot that that was the name of a character Jennifer, in The Witcher. With a Y. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, I quit the podcast. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> but back to the actual discussion. Mm, I, right. I, I, you think, I would like to see what any like PS3 builds of this game controlled like. It's the same because it controls the but same. But I mean, as, like, I imagine Eco. like the. Uh, I mean, not in that sense, but like how Trico, like how the AI worked, like oh, yeah. how they like. Because I imagine it's just a worse version on the PS3 of yeah. what they did eventually. <laughs> just like Trico, just like walking over here and then turning around, and walking back over there. <laughs> yeah, going laps. Even like AI that is lauded in this industry doesn't behave in, like, any semblance of a realistic way. Yeah. I imagine it's easier to make something act like it's a dog than to act like it's a human being. Well, obviously. Right. Yeah. But the accuracy with which they made Trico act like a dog is incredible. (laughs) And the accuracy with which anyone has made a person act like a person is still, like, a laughable concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if anyone's tried to make, like, a cyborg dog that is actually convincing yet. I wonder if that's a thing that exists in the world. I don't think robotics have, like developed far enough that you could actually make a cyborg dog just body you know like actual like like make it oh they'll like ambulate like a dog yeah okay like, I mean, like uh like robo puppy from right. futurama yeah yeah they, uh they'd all look like boston dynamics yeah things. i don't think you can make the parts Oops. like small enough there was or... totally a robot dog toy when i was a kid but obviously it didn't like, it, yeah. like, it didn't walk around like a dog does. Mm-hmm. It just had four legs, and it would kind of, like, like hop back and forth Yeah, mm-hmm. to move around, uh, and didn't act like a dog at all. Yeah. So this is something that's, like, on the minds of people making. I bet if we looked it up, you could buy, like, a semi-realistic dog robot for your kid. Yeah, Sony made the ones you're talking about. I think they're called, like, Ibos or something. Uh, and people... I think this predates the Ibo that I'm talking about. Is it oh. techno? No. Oh, it might have been, did it have a little bone? Yep. And then you would tap it to the face, and mm-hmm, it would be yeah. like, I love bones. But b- bark, bark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, bones. is so cool, man. Thanks for the bones. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I mean bark. I mean, love. <laughs> bark? <laughs> bark, bark. Woof! <laughs> and this is the reason uh, why people in Japan give these robotic dogs funerals already. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine what it's going to be like when we have the real cyborg dogs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When we have the neural network of dog consciousness <laughs> <laughs> broadcasting out behavioral analytics. Uh, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> so let's uh, let's see if we have any final thoughts. This feels like a project where Team Ico bit off just a little bit too much. Like... They, they got real close, and it was still super effective emotionally, the way that Trico behaves uh, and, and ambulates and just idles through all the things he does. He feels like a distinct and real being, and they were successful on that front. But they weren't successful enough at taking 
the mechanics related to him, and especially the control over your player character interacting with him in like a smooth enough way to make that an enjoyable gameplay experience moment to moment. Like, narratively, tonally, they're just as successful at all the games as they always have been. But this is the first time I've played a Team Ico game where I feel like the moment-to-moment gameplay was kind of a chore. And mm-hmm. I just wished I could get to the next scene or set piece and not have to just be like, over, over there, go to the right, do that thing. Uh, like I wanted to get past the game uh, and, and get to the next thing they wanted to show me, and that's not a good sign. So I enjoy that I played it. But I'm I'm I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed. Um, I was also a little bit disappointed, but I feel like the game's issues, like the the controls and like the camera, didn't bother me as much as they will most people because I'm me and I'm really <laughs> tolerant of that kind of stuff for some reason. But um, I think they they succeeded with Trico like completely, and he is like a total like programming marvel and i think the game is almost just worth playing just to experience that Mm -hmm. um and i really hope this game made enough money that like oeda and team eco keep making games i feel like that would be like the most depressing reality in which this game flopped and then just everything related to Eco just vanished into the ether. Though we did just get the Shadow of the Colossus remake. That's true. So yeah. I'm hoping that might have been uh, like a cash infusion type situation. Fun fact, it was. Okay, that's kind of, I sort of suspected. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm still, I still got it, so. <laughs> uh. Yeah, how many times am I going to buy Shadow of the Colossus over the course of my life? I don't even know. Yeah. Plenty. It's More entering into now. a Resident yeah. Evil 4 <laughs> situation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully that's the kind of thing that will help them to continue to work on this. Even, like, taking the tech that they developed from this game could easily be used, like, like they did with the movement tech from Eco making it into Shadow of the Colossus and the Colossus climbing tech making it into The Last Guardian. I feel like there's a chance that we'll see something even more ambitious from them in the future. Barrel consumption. That's going to yeah. be the next <laughs> game through line. You to, no, you just manufacture barrels. I mean, yeah. <laughs> At the end of the game, like, you do this whole thing, it plays like in Finna Factory, mm-hmm. and then, like, at the end of the game, like, you just see, like, a kid drop on the <laughs> table, and you're like... Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when I said barrel consumption, I meant capitalist consumption. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, how silly of me. <laughs> oh, the one thing that I do want to say uh, before we close out is, uh, like, we just talked about The Last Guardian, but weirdly, it seems like not a lot of people really talked about The Last Guardian. Like, it was such... Before it came out, it was a big thing. Like, people were like, oh... Nine year development cycle for the next game from Team Eco. Let's see what crazy thing happens. It comes out like three dudes go, I didn't like it. And then nobody spoke of it ever again. <laughs> and I find that really strange because, like, not only was it not like on someone's game of the year list, it wasn't even on like one of those highfalutin games should feel like a punishment to play <laughs> games of the year list type situations and it just baffles me because there's so much interesting going on with this game uh and yeah like andy said i feel like it might legitimately be worth playing just to experience the way that trico like moves around and and like acts in the world it does kind of seem like no one or like kind of like niche of people really latched onto this yeah. yeah, and it, it feels like, like such flew the game under, that like, would. everyone's radar. Mm-hmm. Maybe in like ten years, it'll have like a huge cult following or something. Yeah, the it'll... dog people. Dog people. <laughs> God, what a weird. Uh, thanks for listening to Noclip this week. <laughs>
What are we talking about next time? Uh, next time we're going to be talking about Hollow Knight, the game that everyone talked about for a minute there. <laughs> uh, until then, you can get a hold of us. All of our contact information is at noclippodcast.com or on splattershot.pro. Uh, and for this week, and also every other week, if you really want to, you can go to noclip.com slash teameco. For no reason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> give us a five-star review on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to us on. Uh, check us out on YouTube. Watch all of our old episodes. Sure. Then listen to yeah. all of our old episodes. Follow all of our commands. Mm-hmm. Share with your friends. <laughs> Do what is required. Smash that like button. <laughs> See you guys later. The, the average high is like 51, and the average low is like 30 degrees on any given day in March across all of time in Wheeling. So it's between 51 and 30. How about that global warming, am I right? <laughs> what a hoax. <laughs> <laughs>